Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Time to bring some focus to your favorite and not so favorite geeky films. Cam here and welcome back to Cam in Focus. Now, before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of our geeky news and discussions. And also, just in case you're not aware, head over to MetallicDiceGames.com and use the code GNN at checkout for 10% off of your entire purchase. If you enjoy tabletop gaming, I guarantee MetallicDiceGames.com has the stuff for you. Or if you prefer some geeky apparel, head over to RippedApparel.com and use the code GNN10. That's GNN10 at checkout for 10% off of your purchase from that website. Here we go. Alright, so I wanted to take this episode to talk a bit about Harry Potter. And yes, I know the author of the books has been involved in controversy, and I'm not going to comment on that. Sociopolitical issues aren't something I like to get involved in, so if you came here expecting me to spend some time on this video talking about J.K. Rowling, then I'm sorry to disappoint. Moving on. Harry Potter has become a cultural phenomenon, and the films are no different. They're all fantastic in their own way, and each builds off the last very well, leading to a fantastic conclusion. Now, the films have had a few different directors over the years, from Chris Columbus to Alfonso Cuaron to Mike Newell, but the one I want to focus on today is David Yates, who directed Order of the Phoenix and continued on to direct the rest of the films in the series. First and foremost, he brings his own style and aesthetic to the films. His directing style reminds me a lot of Sam Raimi, and every now and then I can catch little touches of Evil Dead in there, which I love. Besides that though, there is one thing David Yates has done that I feel the other directors weren't quite able to do, and that was to break our heroes. Now what do I mean by that? If you go back and watch the Harry Potter films leading up to Order of the Phoenix, something I noticed was that Harry goes through most of those films without truly becoming unhinged. It's mostly just him reacting to things and questioning his surroundings. We see a little bit of Harry becoming emotional in Prisoner of Azkaban. Shut up! Shut up! He was that friend! But it truly starts to become serious in Order of the Phoenix. In that film, we see Harry broken, hopeless, and we see him truly let loose in more than one way. Look at me! Stop it! Don't say a word against my father! Weak! I'm not weak! Then prove it! and this unraveling of the characters carries on through the rest of the films. Just from the opening shot of the movie, we can tell that this Harry is vastly different than he was in the films that came before. Him sitting alone in a deserted park truly emphasizes how alone and isolated he feels, and that's a theme that's extremely prevalent throughout. Now, Daniel Radcliffe is a great actor, but the scripts need to give him the opportunity to lay it all out on the table and let his emotions take over and David Yates truly gives him the opportunity to let that happen. Snape! He trusted you! Fight back! You coward, fight back! <laughs> don't know why I listen to that radio every night, dear. To make sure I don't hear Ginny's name. Or Fred. Or George. Or Mo. Oh, you think I'm not listening too? You think I don't know how this feels? Oh, you don't know how it feels! I think it's important to see a protagonist succumb to their emotions because in addition to being exciting to see, it also makes them feel multidimensional. Not that Harry felt particularly flat in the previous films, but the capacity to emote things like anger, desperation, and things of that nature I feel was kind of lacking in the first four films. <laughs> there's a cell in Azkaban with your name on it. <laughs> now, just stay away from me! I said I'm fine, Ron! doing everything I can. You're not doing enough. Tell them how it happened that night. Tell them how you looked him in the eye. A man who trusted you and killed him. Well, okay, I'll be fair. Azkaban does get a pass because we do see some of Harry unhinged in that film, and it is commonly regarded as the best film of the series. But anyway, having a protagonist let their emotions out in such visceral ways makes them, in a lot of ways, seem more human and thus more relatable to the audience as long as the context for their emotion is established. Yeah, it's cool to see Harry discovering new magics and having things happen to him, but what's more rewarding in my opinion is seeing how those things affect him beyond just seeming like another risky adventure. The themes in movies 5 through 8 are much darker than the other ones and David Yates captures that idea fantastically. Not only with things like his shot composition and the lighting and even the content of the story itself, but also his ability to bring out the raw emotion of each character. They're all stuck in a frightening situation, 
and they're all battling their own demons, many of which aren't ever fully stated in dialogue until they reach their breaking point. So the buildup of their internal struggles feels authentic. There's more to being vulnerable than just being scared or being in a scary situation. It's also about how much you as a person can take before you crack. And it's not just the protagonists that get the opportunity to emote in that way either. The villains do too. And I'm not talking about Voldemort. Specifically, I'm talking about Draco Malfoy. The sixth film, The Half-Blood Prince, gives us a much deeper look into Malfoy. In the previous films, he acted just as a nuisance to Harry and his friends. He didn't serve a huge role in the plot. But in film six, he's been tasked with killing the most powerful wizard in the world. And throughout the film, you can feel the pressure mounting on him, not only in his stated role in the plot, but also in shots of his face that slowly zoom in to hammer home the stress he's feeling. It all comes to a head in his scene in the bathroom when he's crying over a sink. That one moment gives so much more depth to his character than all the rest of the films leading up to it combined. You can really feel the pressure that's weighing him down, and it's the first time that we see Draco so vulnerable and so human. And small moments like that are something that I can't praise David Yates enough for. In my opinion, David Yates to Harry Potter is like the Russos to the Avengers franchise. They both succeed in portraying a certain tone that leaves room for lighter moments but really hammers in that the plot revolves around the characters rather than the story. They all succeed in making the characters feel like characters and not just special people that the plot happens to. Their thoughts and feelings are expressed marvelously on screen through a great combination of clever editing and shot composition, as well as strong scripts that present a character-driven story in which the characters make choices and deal with the ensuing consequences. I'm honestly curious to know what the franchise would have been like if he had directed every film, but that's a topic for another time. Well, that's all I got for you today. Yeah, I know this video was a little bit lighter in terms of content, but really it's a topic that I've been wanting to put into words for a while, so thanks for sticking around. Let me know what you think about the Harry Potter franchise in the comments below. And if you haven't, be sure to like and subscribe to Geek News Now to stay up with all of our content. This has been Cam and Focus, proud to be part of the Geek News Now network. Find us on social media, links for everything in the description below. Have a wonderful day everybody!